Hello everybody. After last week's video about aluminum frames and things to be aware of when purchasing used or vintage aluminum um, frames and bikes, there were some questions about what to look out for with steel bikes. So I've pulled down a few frames um, to show you what can go wrong with steel frames. Obviously rust is the largest um, problem that you run into with, with steel frames. and what is okay uh, levels of rust um, and when you should start to, to worry or kind of what we're going to cover um, and I have a few examples. Obviously other things can happen with steel frames too. Um, stuck seat posts, bent or stripped out um, derailleur hangers, uh, especially in older frames where the derailleur hanger is, is part of the frame and it's not replaceable. Um, great thing about aluminum bikes is the rear hail hangers are always replaceable, so that's not an issue you have to worry about. Stuck bottom brackets seem to happen a lot more often with um, steel frames because of rust. Um, again, galvanic corrosion can cause aluminum frames to get stuck bottom brackets, but I don't see it to be as big of a problem. Now, steel frames can crack. It's just a significantly rare. I've had thousands of frames and bikes pass through the shop and I can't think of a cracked steel frame that cracked from from stress like uh, all the aluminum frames I showed you in the last video I have seen them crack from you know being in accidents or where rust has weakened something and then they've cracked or we're just gonna go through and look at some things and, and show you different levels of rust and then a few other things to, to be mindful of when purchasing a steel frame. Now this, again, doesn't just apply to vintage mountain bikes, this applies to any used steel frame. Um, so let's get started. So this is a Bridgestone MB2, um, and it's seen better days, unfortunately. It does have a stuck crank set. I've tried to pull it off, um, and it's, it's just pretty stuck, and it's unfortunate because it's a, a fairly nice specialized crank. But it's just kind of hanging up. It was hanging up in the basement as just one of those winter projects. And now that I pulled it up for this um, this video, I'm probably going to give it some more attempts to get the crank arm off. So as you'll see, this frame has some pretty good surface rust um, here on the chain stay from chain slap chipping the paint and then you know the bare metal being exposed. Um, it also has it you know on the seat stays. We're gonna come back to this area because this is one of the more severe areas. But just a quick, you know, overview, especially here in Minnesota, anywhere where we have bare metal, we are going to get surface rust pretty quickly because it's just humid in the in the summers, it rains a lot, and then in the winters, obviously we um, it snows and road salt is used, so rust happens. Surface rust isn't like here's a good example like this isn't anything to be worried about yes it looks ugly um but you know this isn't structural um levels of rust it is just surface rust it is okay you know the you could just cover that up with you could clean this and cover that up with some polish or wax to minimize you know future rust um the frame could be you know completely repainted there's a lot of things that could be done but if we look here, this is where we start to get into, you know, things that are a little bit worse. You'll see that the it is, it is bubbly and kind of um, cratered from the rust. So that just means that the rust is deeper. It's worked longer at uh, damaging the frame. And now if you look in here, you can see that when I pick at it with the pick, we are getting flakes that are getting removed. So there's a vent hole right there. Um, but so that's not a hole caused from rust, but um, and same on this side, um, vent hole. But just the whole, you know, connection of that brace is, you know, that is some deep rust. And what we have to remember is that what we're seeing on the outside is being, um, you know, is equal or maybe the inside is worse 
Um, so this level of rust isn't, um, you know, it's probably again not the end of the world. It would need to be, you know, unlike these places where, you know, a little bit of cleaning and some wax or polish could, you know, solve the problem or touch up paint. When you get the rust to this level where, you know, you're going to need to sand um, things smooth. This is where we start to worry about like how weak has the rust made the, um, the metal. So when you see rust like this, it is, you know, night is a good idea to, I like to use a pick and just kind of pick at it to make sure, you know, that stuff is, is, is still solid. And I have a perfect example to show you of where um, it is not solid. Um, so, you know, being aware of rust when you start to see, you know, the bubbles and the pitting, is those are areas that you want to inspect. Um, as we mentioned in the aluminum video, you know, you always want to check the seat posts um, for stuck seat posts so you don't have to worry, you know, you either know ahead of time or you don't have to worry about your post being stuck. So another thing I mentioned was derailleur hangers. When, they're, when they are built into the frame like this, um, steel is malleable, it is bendable. So we can bend these back with a hanger alignment tool multiple times, but at a certain point, they're gonna start not bending back as nice. And if they do get bent really bad, um, it can be hard to bend them back correctly. And what can also happen is, normally doesn't happen when there's a derailleur in, because if you think about it, when there's a derailleur in, um, there's going to be a, a solid bolt in these threads and it's not really going to be able to bend in the threads, right? The bend is going to be here, or here, or here. But if, let's say there was no derailleur attached to this frame and this frame was bouncing around, storage or etc., you can get it where they bend around the, the uh, thread. So like maybe it, here's the middle of the bend. Once they bend like that, impossible or extremely difficult to obviously thread in a derailleur hanger alignment tool so you have to bend that flat um, different ways which can then cause the threads to come out of alignment now problem solvers and a few other companies do make things you can use to fix that um, a lot of times you kind of drill it out and you pop in a in a, in a, a piece back here and then that which has threads in it so that you can save your um, hanger so there is solutions if things do break back here but again it's something to be mindful of when you're working on a frame um, so that you know that there's going to be some added costs to the build and so it doesn't catch you by surprise just you kind of want to check these these areas and now um this next frame i'm going to show you let me grab it quick so this is a really cool soul craft um hand-built frame. I believe they're out of California. After Salsa was sold to QBP, one of the frame builders that worked at Salsa started Soulcraft, I believe is the history. Now this frame, if you look at it, it looks in really good shape. We don't see any of the, you know, the massive paint chips and surface rust um, like we did on the MB2. And you know, it is steel, I mean, it does um, attach to it. Um, but when I wasn't expecting it, there was a bubble in the paint right here. And I took on my handy pick and what I discovered when I was checking the area was that the metal had rusted through and the pick went into the frame. So there's a hole here now that would obviously would need to be repaired for this frame to go on but there was a small paint bubble which you really wouldn't think anything of but that means that there is rust under the paint so those are areas of concern and again i like to take a pick kind of pick away the paint so i can see what's going on and in the process of that the pick went right through the frame and there's a the hole is probably three four mils long you know and a mil or two tall um so obviously, you know, moisture got in there. This is a Minnesota frame um, and rust happened. And, 
it got damaged. And if you would look at this frame, you would be like, oh man, this frame's in great condition. There's nothing to worry about. But that is why, you know, you wanna look for paint bubbles. Um, I was trying to find a frame that had a paint bubble so I could show you, but I didn't um, find one that I hadn't already, you know, taken a pic to. So if you see a paint bubble, you, know, you, you wanna kind of scrape it clear and check the area. There's a chance this frame was repainted, you know, and so it's covering up th other things. So repainted frames are always something that kind of worry me because I don't know what's underneath. Um, you hope it was done, you know, by a professional or professionally, you know, like metal was sanded and taken care of and they're not repainting it to hide rust. But that's something to be aware of. If a frame is repainted, you know, ask you know, where they got repainted or how did you do it? Um, so you can maybe learn a little bit um, about what was going on or why they repainted it. Because if they were hiding a bunch of surface, if they were, if they took, someone took this MB2 and repainted it and, you know, didn't, and maybe this area was, it was more damaged than it is, it seems to be. And they covered it up and just were like, oh no, the frame's really great. It's, you know, it's new, it's repainted. And then you were riding along and that broke, it would be kind of a disappointment. So just asking those questions or inspecting a frame, you know, cause you could obviously look inside the frame, right? You could look into the bottom bracket shell with a flashlight. You could look into the, the, the if there was holes in this frame, there's no holes, which is why there's no hole from the seat tube into the bottom bracket shell which is why I believe that this rust happened is any moisture that would go into the, the seat tube is then just gonna be stuck on top of the bottom bracket shell and rust out um, that area where that hole was. So taking a flashlight and looking in the inside of the frame, you can obviously also look into the head tube. Now again, this one is solid, so you can't look in and it's solid here, which is good because that should mean that no moisture should get into this tube and no moisture should be able to get into this tube, but it means that moisture can get into this tube. You know, if you own a bike like this, a good thing to do would be to obviously run bottle cage bolts, even if you don't have a bottle cage. Keep a good layer of grease in your seat tube so that is a, you know, a tight fit, um, so moisture can't get down in there, so that you don't end up with rust forming where water is 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 stuck in in your frame. So if we just run over the kind of things we've talked about with steel frames, um, rust, obviously. Number one, big, huge, main problem, rust. Um, surface rust, like on you know the chain stays of the Bridgestone, ugly but not really an issue. Many ways to fix it. Wax, polish, repaint, cover up. You know, you could, people hit it with nail polish. I don't like to do that because it's like very difficult to get the right uh, color. I just kind of clean it and then hit it with a wax and polish to just keep it protected. But you can do whatever you would like. Um, checking seat posts. Making sure the seat posts aren't stuck. Um, and if it is stuck, just knowing it's stuck and then, you know, they're gonna have to get it out. Checking um, derailleur hangers if they're not replaceable, um, making sure they're not super bent or that, especially that there's no bends like going through the threads because those will be um, harder to fix. Um, looking for more severe rust, such as on um, this brake bridge here. And then lastly, I showed you the Soulcraft. That looks great, and you know, as I said, it may have been repainted, we don't know, but it had a paint bubble and it had a hole in it. But so rust is our enemy with steel frames, especially places where it's, it's wet. Um, you know, this is probably just like cars. This is way less of an issue in the Southwest, but in here in the Midwest or the coast, you know, the salt on the coast is really bad. The salt up here in the winters on the roads is really bad um, for frames, just like it is for any steel. So if a bike has been a winter bike or if it's been a beach bike, yeah, I just hope that this kind of gives you a little bit of knowledge now on things to be aware of with steel frames. And like I said, this is not just vintage bikes. This is any steel frame. I've seen, uh, I worked at a bike shop in Baton Rouge 
we would see two, three-year-old steel bikes um, that were disgusting coming from the coast or pool chemicals. Down there, a lot of people have pools. Chlorine and other pool chemicals also are make things rust. So if you store the pool chemicals near where the bike is stored, people's bikes would come in, they'd be like two years old and all the spokes would be corroded and the frames would look bad. And we and I didn't know, but my boss would be like, oh, you must store your bike by your pool chemicals. And they'd be like, oh yeah, I set it up next to the cabin that the pool chemicals are in. And I mean, coming from Minnesota, that's just nothing I thought about, but down there that is a problem. So if you have a pool, be aware that the chemicals can rust your your bike or any other steel items in your garage hopefully uh next week uh we'll be back on the the kirk project it was a whirlwind week this week getting ready to go to the madison bike swap uh and the brick and mortar shop opened back up for um standard hours um so i've been a little bit busier um but i thought it'd be great to Continue on making a video every week and this was a cool topic that people had asked about so I wanted to do it If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It's gonna be more great content coming Like I said doing a video every week um, If you're looking for parts or frames for your vintage projects or a project you want to start Make sure to check out our shop Gringineer Cycles at Gringineer.com. I'll have a link below um, Have a great rest of your day. Bye